final chapter of the year. Um, chapter 12 is dealing with solid figures or three-dimensional figures. Um, we have different specific types of figures we want to go over. Eventually we're going to get into volume and surface area, but first today we just want to talk about the different kinds of solid figures that we have and we're going to study. Um, the first type of solid figure is called the polyhedron. Now notice it's similar to the polygon and the reason is uh, poly means many if you remember. So polyhedrons means many faces. So if you look in here, we know this one's a cube. This one should be familiar. Each of the flat surface is called the face, okay? The parts, um, these are still vertices. All the little points um, are that are the corners are called the vertices. But where the faces meet each other, we have an edge here. So where the faces meet is called an edge. Where the edges meet is called a vertex, okay? Um, the other thing is if you have more than one, here's another polyhedron. If you have more than one, they're called polyhedra. That is the plural. Now what sets the polyhedron apart from other figures we're going to study is that every face is a polygon. So if you look at the cube, every face is a square. That's one type of polyhedron. Um, this is another one where you notice there's two shapes here. We have squares around the side, um, but I have two parts here called the bases. We're gonna talk about the minute that are triangles. So let's look at another kind of different type of polyhedron, They're also a polyhedron. This one is, you'll recognize it um, as a pyramid. Every side, every face though, is still a triangle or a square. So it still meets the definition of a polyhedron. Here's two more kind of different looking ones. I'm hoping you can see these. Maybe I'll put a broader white part here. This one, every face is a triangle, all four of them. Another type of pyramid. And this one here, we have rectangles all around, but the two bases, the two sides that are the same are hexagons. Hopefully you can see that. Now, unfortunately, if we were in class, I could be handing these out to everybody. You could take a look at them. Um, kind of see how they're put together. So what you might want to do, one, look at your book, the pictures, I know they're two-dimensional, but you need to see how they draw, how do you draw this two-dimensionally? Um, take a look how they're drawn, because that's how your test is going to be. Everything's going to have to be two-dimensional. Um, but also, look around your house and see if you can find these three-dimensional figures. It kind of will help you, especially when you're doing surface area, um, and volume, you can kind of see what we're talking about. Um, but let's break these down. There's two types. I kind of showed you these two types here. There's two different types of polyhedra, um, the prism and the pyramid. And let's take a look at the prism first. All right, let's look at our first type of polyhedron called the prism, okay? Now, as I showed you the two different types of polyhedra, the pyramid and the prism, you might be able to kind of give me a definition on your own, but let's write down some specifics, okay? The prism, first of all, has two bases that are congruent. So when you look at these, this is kind of the same, hopefully it looks the same type of figure. Um, and you can see there's two bases and the rest around it are rectangles. Okay, so here we have a triangle base, another triangle base, and on the prism, your bases are congruent. Okay, so we have two bases that are congruent. And then the, the faces that are connected between the bases are all rectangles. Okay, now I wanted to show it to you laying down this way because when you think of a base, you think, well, that's what it's sitting on but sometimes they're gonna draw it sitting on the rectangles and the bases are kind of at the front and the back. So you have to be able to recognize the prism and notice that the two congruent sides are the triangles and the rectangles are the parts around, okay? So you have two congruent bases and then all other faces are rectangles, okay? And the other thing is we call the prism by the name of the base. For example, this and this 
would actually be called a triangular prism, okay? Because the two bases are triangles, all right? Now let me show you again from my um, little examples here some other prisms that I have, okay? Now this one, this one is our cube, so it's a special kind of rectangular prism. Again, we put it over the white here. So every face on a, on a cube is kind of hard to choose your bases. They're all the same, so it really doesn't matter. But if you notice the two bases, if I choose the green one in the top here, those are my bases. All the other sides are still rectangles. They're special rectangles because they're squares, but they are still rectangles. Now this prism here, if you look at the face, Okay, the two sides that would be considered my bases are the hexagons. And then every side between them is a rectangle. So I would call this one a hexagonal prism because the two bases are hexagons. And this one is another triangular prism, kind of like the one I did here. Two triangles, the sides around there are rectangles. So again, another triangular prism. See if you can find some around your house, um, just to kind of look at the faces. Let me see, I grabbed two more here. Um, this one I thought of as an actual a triangular prism you might be able to find. It's a Toblerone candy, I'm not allowed to say that or not, but they do have the triangular prism as their box, okay? Um, any other kind of box, let me grab one of these. Okay, everyone should have some, some kind of box like this in their house. Could be a shoe box or anything. Now this one we could call a rectangular prism. Now the, the thing about a rectangular prism, because they're all rectangles, every side, square is also a rectangle, you could choose any two sides to be your base. So if I wanted to, the two smallest sides to be my bases, then I've got rectangles all around, so it still matches. Well, let's say I want these two sides, the two largest sides, to be my bases. I still have rectangles around the sides there. So you can kind of play around with this one and choose whichever side you want to be the base as long as there's still rectangles there. Okay? So that is a prism. You look for the rectangles and you have two bases. Now let's take a look at the second one. All right, let's look at our second type of polyhedron the pyramid, and these a little bit harder to find actual examples other than my little models here, um, but you should be familiar with uh, Egyptian pyramids. Now, the Egyptian pyramids are the ones with the square bottom. Now, here's the difference between the prism and the pyramid, and obviously you probably can tell by looking at it. This time we have one base, okay? So here my base is a square or a rectangle, um, and every other face around is a triangle this time. Here I have one base, this time the base is a triangle. Okay, and then there's three triangles around that. They all, the other faces meet at a vertex at the top. So you could think to yourself, this time we have one base and the others, the, we call them the lateral faces. So we'll play the other faces are triangles this time instead of rectangles. That's how we tell those two apart. Um, again, here are some of my models. This one, if you look at the bottom, is a square. So we would call this one, again, we name it by the base. This one we call either a square pyramid or a rectangular pyramid, same as this one. So this one's a rectangular pyramid. And this model, the bottom is also a triangle as well as the sides. Um, it doesn't look exactly the same. These are isosceles, this one's equilateral, so not all four sides are congruent, but it is still a triangle, so we would call this a triangular pyramid. Okay, so some of the things similar to the prism is the sides are all polygons um, and they do have bases, but the pyramid has one base, other sides are triangles, the prism has two bases, and the other sides are rectangles. All right, let's take a look at some figures that are not polyhedra. Okay, let's pause for our first question. 
tell me how many bases does a prism have? All right, let's look at some special polyhedra. Um, these are regular polyhedra, similar to regular figures. Remember, they had congruent sides um, and congruent angles, but regular polyhedra have uh, congruent faces, okay? So all the faces are congruent, and there are um, five different kinds of uh, regular polyhedra. The other thing is they have a special name. They are called the platonic solids, named after Plato, um, Greek philosopher, um, who was, supposedly was the first to write about the platonic solids. Um, so they went ahead and named them after him. There's only five, I think I said that already. Um, and let's take a look at them. The first one is a figure made up of four congruent triangles, okay? This one, since it has four sides, you can see what's right, there's five kinds, um, five solids. The first one is called a tetrahedron. Four sides, and they are all triangles, okay? So all four sides are congruent, and you kind of look at it, so it's a nice pyramid. Um, the tetrahedron so this regular the regular four-sided regular triangular uh, pyramid is called the tetrahedron tetra meaning four okay um, the next one is also we know this one as the cube but if you look at it all six sides are squares so six if you remember is hex so this one is called a hexahedron So it has six sides, and this time they are squares, all right? Regular squares or regular rectangles, right? All right, but we can call it a cube as well, but it has, specific name is hexahedron. Um, from there, we go up to eight sides. Now, if you notice, it's kind of like two pyramids stuck together with the base that is a, a, a square. But this side has four triangles on top, four triangles on the bottom. So this is an eight-sided figure. So this is our octahedron. So it's eight sides. Let's try to redraw that. S-I-D-E-S. -E eight sides. And they are all triangles, regular triangles. Okay. That is my octahedron. Next up is, nope, not this one. This is the dodecahedron. If you count it, there are one, two, three, four, five with a one in the middle. When you flip it over, same thing, five around, one in the center. So we have 12 sides. So we have a dodecahedron. 12 sides. And this time, if you look at them, they're all pentagons. I don't have to write this one out. Actually, I can tell it, right? Okay. They're all regular pentagons, five-sided figure, okay? Now the only other one that has regular polygons that make a solid figure with just the regular sides, and again, these are triangles. This one, if you take it and count it, you're gonna find out it has 20. This is the icosahedron. Okay, 20-sided figure. And again, they're all triangles, okay? Those are the only polygons. Once we get larger, they're not going to be able to give us um, a, a solid figure. When you put them together, they're bigger than that 360. We wind up getting a flat surface or bigger than a flat surface, so it doesn't work. But these, these three different types of regular polygons will work as um, a regular polyhedra. So I want you to be able to know the name, and if you guys are going to be making some of these, we're going to talk about that on Thursday, part of your project, um, dealing with the platonic solids. But go ahead and see if you can get the names. Some of the first part, at least, is similar, hexahedron, octahedron, dodecahedron, you know those names. You have to learn the other two, okay? All right, let's look at a few more terms that we talk about with our polyhedra. Um, most of the ones we talk about, all the ones we've talked about so far are convex 
polyhedra. So we do have convex and concave again, like we did with our polygons. Um, I tried to draw one here. Hopefully it looks like it's kind of got a part cut out of the center here. So anytime your shape, remember, is caved in, just like the concave uh, polygon, it would be a concave polyhedra, okay? All the ones we have um, have been convex. The definition, again, if you can draw a point to from one vertex to another vertex and you're outside of your figure, then it's going to be concave. Um, but again, if you just think of it caves in, that works too. Okay, one more thing we're going to look at is cross-section. Okay, here's question number two. Please name the platonic solid with 20 sides. Okay, another concept you're going to be asked about is looking at the cross-sections of some of our solid figures, which means when you cut our figure, they say cutting it with a plane, but kind of think of cutting it with a knife, that's good enough, um, to, to see what kind of figure, what kind of shape do you make on that cut what what does that f new face look like okay now I drew some up here which is not all that easy to draw two-dimensionally especially for me let's see if you see them and then we'll take a look at and actually cut um, a solid and see what we're talking about all right so here we have a cylinder so the idea is well, okay what if we cut straight through that cylinder and I like to usually use um, some cranberry sauce but I forgot to get some so kind of think of that in your head. What we're doing is we're cutting through a cylinder and what shape do you make when you cut it? So if you're cutting straight through it, the shape that we've made should be a circle, it should be just a perfect circle, right? If you cut it straight across. Then they say, well, let's take that knife or take the plane and cut down through the cranberry sauce or the cylinder. And what shape do we make then? If you can kind of, hopefully you can see it, when you cut through it, you're actually gonna be cutting and getting a rectangle, okay? So even though the, the rest of the shape has that round circle at the top, it's rounded, but when you cut straight through, you're gonna cut a rectangle when you open it up and look at it. That's what makes it a cross section. And here we're trying to cut it diagonally. So it's a nice circle if you look at it straight, but when you cut it diagonally, you're gonna wind up with more of an oval shape, okay? Because of that, that diagonal cut when you cut take this piece off after you cut it and just take a look at that face, you're gonna wind up with an oval. So what I thought to do, since I forgot the cranberry sauce, is we have some butter here, okay? Good old fashioned butter. Hopefully in your head, you're already saying, ooh, that's a rectangular prism, hopefully, okay? Which it is, all right? Um, so let's think, we're kinda of, kind of doing the same cuts. If we start here, we said, let's look at it, cutting it straight through, right? Here, if I cut it, I should have softened it a little bit, but I didn't. I should hold its shape, but now when we look at it, that new cut is still a square, right? Because we just cut it straight down. That one looks good, right? But if we cut it this way, let's try a diagonal cut. See what do we get when we cut it this direction? Okay, now when you look at it, the cut itself is a triangle, right? Can you see that? So when they say, look, what's the cross section? I hope you can see it. Kind of hard to tell. Um, maybe you can picture in your head or you look at it here when I pick it up, right? That it is actually a triangle. Can you see it with that hand? No. There we go. So we have it, we cut the corner off so we wind up with a triangle face, right? Um, let's see if we can do anything else interesting. Um, if we can cut through, what if we get a diagonal cut this way? Maybe it won't be a triangle. Eh, not too interesting. We wind up with a rectangle instead of a square, right? When we do diagonally. And of course, if we cut it just straight through, mutilating my butter here, we're going to wind up with a long rectangle when we do look at the face of the cut, right? Oh, we already cut the top part off, so it's not a rectangle anymore. But this one would be what? A nice trapezoid, okay? So think about it as they're asking you to look at the cross sections. Kind of think to yourself, what would happen when I cut it with my knife and I open up and look at it? That's what we're looking at, okay? Hold on to those thoughts. All right, that ends our first section of Chapter 12. Um, just taking a look at all the new figures we're going to be studying for, this, for the chapter. Um, so let's look at our joke of the day. Why did the Romans 
not find algebra challenging because they knew x was always 10. All right, have a good day.